This is the Straight Up Breakdown Podcast with Greg Smith and Jay Foreman. Oh, yeah. Tell it to me straight up. Hello, and welcome into the Straight Up Breakdown Podcast, proudly part of the Hale Varsity Network. I am Greg Smith. You are still thawing out, but getting ready for the second National Signing Day on Wednesday, friend. <laughs> I'm Jay Foreman. You're uh, better half digging out snow. <laughs> Extraordinaire. So I, I'm only laughing because I know that she was okay after she went to she the and your wife bank. into the snowbank. But how? I, but you, she was way up on that bad boy though, like this sideways, leaning like you in the you know the Indy 500 when they're going <laughs> to, into the to the turn. Yeah, yeah. That's not good, man. It was funny. It's see, lean with it, <laughs> lean with it rock with it over there. See, I feel like you've been you've been giving her jokes all day. <laughs> and she's going to be mad at you by about, oh, it's 9.17 right now, 12 o'clock, 12.30. Mm-hmm. That's when the statute of limitations and right, the jokes right, going to yeah, run out yeah, for especially, you. Especially when it comes from my end. Yeah, because it's going to be merciless. So how was the weekend, man? Did you get into anything? Did you stay around the house? Uh, Finish digging the, out the snow? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I did a little bit. Finally, well, I, I got the driveway perfect. Perfect. Okay. Right where you could see the cement. Okay, you can actually it, see it now. Right then, the city came through and said, "You know what? We're just going to just blow up everything you did and just put." It. Now I was I was like encapsulated by the snowbank of the 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 city coming through. See, I had actually blocked that out. I just gave you a look because that's the exact same thing that happened to me. We had it right. I right. was I was out there. I did not have a ridge at the end exactly. of the driveway. Like we were just kind of chipping away at it. Um, and then I went out there. It was Saturday morning. Yep, Saturday morning. And I actually, have, I took a picture of it. I should have sent it to you. It was it's huge pieces of right. snow to where when I was backing up the like um, rear camera thing they, was beeping. We, yeah, exactly. Because it thought I was yep. about to hit something. Yeah, right. it was. So <laughs> was no so joke. at my house, I had to, I just revved that bad boy up. I said, I'm I'm ramming through this bad yeah, boy. Yeah, I did the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> did the same thing. And it was funny because a couple neighbors down um, was about to do the same thing. Yeah. And I waited for him and yeah. let him do let his him, thing. Let him do and, his thing. Yeah. Wait, and we just kind of laughed and kept it moving. Oh, man. Listen, that's, and then I came back. When I came back, I told my wife, I was like, hey, I just had to rev up over that thing. She was like, you had too much fun with that, didn't you? Oh, like, listen, man. I mean, you got to make the best of it in that case because I worked hard to clear right? that thing out. Yeah, and you, and you don't want to go back out there because it's like now it's principal yeah like, i'm it's not the principality going, yeah, yeah. yeah so it's uh well we got a couple 40 degree day, days coming so it should hopefully melt it hopefully yeah then hopefully we get we, snow again on thursday right <laughs> just come back as long as we get some melting um so it's not so treacherous out there we're not yeah. falling off into snow banks we'll be okay um now as always we go we will kick the show off um with our segment called coach speak where we go over something that a coach player or talking head said and then we'll kind of give you the straight up breakdown of what they meant coach speak to real talk now this week it'll come courtesy again of uh nebraska head coach scott frost he's been talking a little bit here and there um, here recently um, where he had this to say after the latest run of transfers that included Luke McCaffrey. Um, He said, quote, we were surprised. You always see them coming a little bit and we're trying to do everything we can to have the right guys in the program. To be honest with you, I love where the team is at right now and I can't spend one second worrying about the kids that aren't on the team. I've got too many great players and great kids on this team. I want guys that want to be here and want to fight with me and fight with each other and we've got a whole locker room Room full of them. Well, I, well, I, I feel like I don't even need to ask good, you what he mo- meant because I feel like shots fired is. The, is yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> you you feel him, you feel what he's saying, yeah, and you and it. This is this one here is the only one that we've had in a while that we, you don't even have to like dissect coach speak. No, there's no no. At, we know, <laughs> and and that's what you want a coach in this position with this situation, he essentially had to draw the line. And look, he can't worry about kids that don't want to be here right now. He, all his focus essentially needs to be on how can you make the the team better? Ultimately, whether he's a talented player, a four star, three star, two star, or five star, if they don't want to be here, you're not going to get, whatever ranking or t- their full Yeah, you're not anyways. going to get the most out of them. Right, anyways, they don't want to be here, and they're always looking for the next thing. So if it, if they came back next year, they'd be looking the year after. Right. If they you're were, always going to have to worry about it in right. a way. Yeah. Then they'd be a graduate transfer. So the shocking one was probably Wandell, considering that uh, the success he had, the media attention that he had, I think with the, the new football facility, I think he was one of the guys that was, was the like, guy, the yeah, guy that they the did. the only football player they had up which, there. Yeah. Which, if I was to give him advice that – 
you know, you probably need to think about that type of stuff. Um, so, you know, I'm sure if, you, if, if we were having – uh, a bush light, I guess, in the Nebraska, the, <laughs> the Nebraska spring water, I like to call it, with Scott off record. I'm sure that he would say, you know, losing Wandell would hurt. And it would just because just from a production standpoint, a character standpoint, a kid standpoint, um, you know what you're going to get with him. Right. Yep. You know who he is. You know, he's going to work. You know, you know, he's going to be, you know, available and accountable. You know, he's a tough kid. Um, you, so I'm sure that hurts, but then ultimately he, you know, is probably saying, you probably also is thinking, you know, sometimes you got to let people fall on their face, make mistakes. And if he doesn't want to be here, I don't want him here. Yeah. And that's, the way it has, and that's the way you have to be. Look, if people go back and use, you know, whatever it's Google or whatever, Nick Saban did the same thing. Now I'm not comparing Scott and Nick Saban, but when Nick Saban took over Alabama, that was a dumpster fire. Yeah. So he essentially had to run guys off through hard practice, discipline, X, Y, and Z. Mm. Nebraska's doing it like kind of a little bit later in the game. Yeah, it's just a little bit. That's the one thing. <laughs> that's the one that's thing, the that thing I, that's to the me one is that this that is that not still change. year one or two right, when but this that, is happening. Right. We're entering four, and so that's where it gets to be a little more concerning. Sure, but I understand but no, the bigger the, picture of right. what is trying to be accomplished. Yeah, and it, it's and, – and, you know, as I can sit here and say, you know – Hey man, dude, if you don't want to be here, you know, kick rocks. You yeah. know, as a coach, ultimately, you know, Wandell was probably well, was your best offensive player. Um, I always cringe when I hear, in this case, his dad in, in their statement. I think, or the statement that came out when they mentioned the NFL, it makes me cringe. I think he mentioned that Wandell mentioned that in his interview with Adam okay. Burke. From okay, ESPN. yeah. So whatever, I, it just makes me cringe. Yeah, because. As you saw, as you see, with some, okay, we just had the Senior Bowl. You saw a Division three guy. We saw a guy from South Dakota State. We've seen guys from smaller schools. Okay, right? Mm-hmm. Nowhere near national championships, and they're not in the SEC. Right. Just because you go to the SEC does not mean that you're going to the NFL. Because let me tell you something. If you're at Nebraska and you're featured and you start to win, your draft stock will go up exponentially yes. faster than just being an average guy at Kentucky in the SEC because – and I and I hate and I don't want to you know because as soon as you say something you they'll, they'll be viewing you like Shaq right I'm not a hater, <laughs> not a hater like but Shaq. I'm a realist right yep Wandell at Nebraska in the Big Ten is more featured not as uh, you don't see it as often right yeah. especially here and uh, and then if you look at our roster right mm-hmm. a guy that's potentially could be or would have been an All Big Ten player in the SEC you're a dime a dozen. Yeah. Because you're and not because you're not showing them anything that they ain't never seen before, and Kentucky is not going to be. They're not high LSU. flying. They're like, not yeah, LA, yeah, right. It's not so, what so it's Alabama's right. offense has turned into. Right. So, Oregon old, old school. So it's a, like, in the, okay, at the end of the day, it's a lateral move. It's a lateral move. It, and, and granted, no, mom's being sick. That's more important, and the time is right because you got a free year. But ultimately, if you're trying to, if you are trying to go into the league, that last year that you're getting back in the end, you're not going to be doing yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Because if you're playing six years or five years in the NFL, you're going to probably get drafted lower than if you were here in Nebraska and play two more. Right. That's just the way it is. So, you know, and then the you know the whole Luke McCaffrey thing and and stuff like that. I I was very, uh, I guess the 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 alarm went off for me or the red lights went off for me or the the you know the red flags per se. Mm-hmm. When you, st- I started to read things where he didn't want to be around, and he wanted to stay and train at home. You know, always so, a red uh, always flag. Always a like, red flag. I, it's very few and, times that we've heard that and had somebody come back and be okay and a good teammate. Right, right. And and I'm not even worried about. I, I was just going to assume that I was taking him at his word that he was going to come back. The mm-hmm. fact that you didn't want to be here and grind with your with your teammates for eight weeks during mm-hmm. winter conditioning, I would never trust you as a player. Yeah, I because this is the time. Play. This is the hardest. This time is the hardest time right now. Yeah, what they're to, doing to now. do something when you have the most time on your hands. You just got done with a you know a season that didn't go the way you wanted for him also. Mm-hmm. And are you willing to get back to it and face the harsh reality of you have some major holes in your game from a quarterback standpoint? You can't even blame it on the coaches. Yeah, you, there's you see, some that's things the thing. that see yeah. that, that's the funny <laughs> thing about fans. Oh well, he goes out there. 
and has bad footwork and throws the ball that is not even catchable ball, and they want to in, – in, in, granted – I've been on my man weekend at Bernie's Verducho, Verducci or whatever his name <laughs> Verduzco. is. Verducho. Verducho. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure if I run into high V, I'm going to still get after him, right? Yeah. I might hug him because I think he's <laughs> funny, but it, I call him the weekend at Bernie's. But the stuff that, th- that he was doing. There's no way that he th- was coaching th- him He ain't being that. coached that. Yeah. So <laughs> right. that's the hardest thing. And I'm going to tell you this. The worst thing any athlete can do is lie to yourself. Yeah. That's number one. The second thing that you can do as an athlete that's that's really, really bad is believe the lie that you're telling yourself. Yeah. Because even if you're doing it 80% right, that 20% can can multiply to 30 40% mm-hmm. is that you're not doing right. Because you're always going to try to go and believe this so-called 80% or 90%. You know, and you, as an athlete, you should always be striving for perfection. You always should be trying to get better. There's always things that you go into a season – that you should be thinking that you need to improve on. Because even if you do a really good job of your, you know, let's say your, you know, swing passes and your short passes in year one, right? And then you're like, I got to improve on my deep throwing accuracy. Well, year two, you might be throwing the ball deeper better, but then you need to maybe be throwing it better over the middle or you need to become a better student of the game. You got to start layering on to. Right, and then sometimes you might have to go back to the first thing that you did well and tighten up on that. Right. And then at some point in time in your career, you really got to reinvent yourself a little bit. Right. You got to think like just think of like uh, I would I wish Cam Newton did this is like, you know, when he first came in the league, he could he he would dominate you in the run game. And then he could hit you over the top with Steve Smith with the deep passing game. And the accuracy wasn't a big deal. Mm -hmm. Well, as he got older, the injury started to creep up on him. And you're not as fast as when you're in from year one or two to year eight, nine, mm-hmm. that you became a more student of the game, a more of a quarterback player. Mm-hmm. Now you see him playing against New England. When he's up in New England, he can't throw the ball. He has a lot of shoulder yes. injuries, <laughs> right? You want to know where the shoulder injuries come from? From all those years not doing the right things fundamentally has mm-hmm. destroyed his shoulder. Because he was getting – well, because he's he getting was getting by, by but with – extreme court, athleticism yeah. like to the point like I mean I, I always thought that Cam Newton was in that group with Mike Vick and yeah. guys like he was that a pr- that Cam were just Newton. amazing athletes and it was just some something a, that you weren't you just weren't going to see that all the no, time no Cam Newton is a game plan breaker <laughs> yeah he, he's, he's a game I always tell the story about when we played Randy Moss up in Minneapolis mm-hmm. we ran co- we ran cover two Moss okay the safety on that side you're okay if you're usually at 10 to 12 mm-hmm. okay you're at 20 okay that pass from Dante Culpepper landed <laughs> in this right here, and Randy Moss caught it like this. He's a game plan. Cam Newton was a game plan breaker. Yeah. Luke McCaffrey's not that. Right. Cade Warner's not that. Farniak's not that. So, But the optics right now, when you're on a losing program, everything is magnified. Correct. So if we went five and three, mm-hmm. right, because we went three and five. Yeah, right? yeah. So if we go five and three and Wandell transfers, what do you think this is going to be written about? How could you transfer? Yeah, how could you leave what, that you're, situation? You're, yeah. how, how could you the team is now on the rise like you wanted it to be. Yeah, yeah. Even if they go four and four, if they don't boo-boo down their leg against Minnesota yeah. or they Illinois. forget the yeah. Illinois <laughs> forget, forget to, to show, show up, up. Yeah. there you go, right? Yeah. Okay, so then it, it, here's the funny thing is, and I can say this on the reverse too, it's just still the same team, right? It's still right. the same team. So three and five, four and four, five, you're still the same team. And conversely, if they go six and two, it's still the same team. Right. This, the special teams are bad. You need to be better on offense. You could just coach your way to this game. Right. You got all right. of that stuff. Will probably so still at the end of the game. day, you know, Scott has a hard job to do, and he has to do it. And it's part of the job right now, and it's part of COVID considering what the you're able to get this free year back. And it's part of it's, – it's also a combination, too, of uh, the stuff that happens now and what was 2020, 2021, mm-hmm. that did not happen even 10 years ago. Oh, not even five. Like, 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 like okay, even, even five, five years Five ago. years ago, so when Tommy Armstrong was like a sophomore and like was that with like Jordan Westerkamp and those guys, yeah. you would have never, ever imagined Jordan Westerkamp after his second year on campus having a good season, the team struggled, but then he leaves. Right. Like you just wouldn't no. just to even put it to that type of example no. that was very recent, like those sorts of things that now coaches have to deal with. Um, and, and it's not even to make excuses for coaches. because This is not just with Frost, though. It's happening all over the all place. Over the place. Um, now, Nebraska is 
at the higher end and of the spectrum, spectrum, though, yeah. when you look at it um, hey. over the last few years. Yeah. Now, yeah. it is – Nebraska is uh, kind of alone um, on that. But that also, though, speaks to something that we've talked about before. I've talked to, I talked about it actually last week on the Varsity Club podcast. So it was about Derek Peterson, where one of the things that I think would help Nebraska a lot in these situations is having a better plan for guys, right? right exactly. And so – and that starts we've, – we've, you and I have talked about this off-pod. Like, this starts with recruiting. It starts – um, when you go to those kids and pitch them to come to Nebraska, that you have an example that you can give them of somebody who has maybe been in their shoes that you've developed and then you've seen them come out the other side. We give the example of Alabama all the time because it's the biggest one. But if you think about it, you really ask yourself, hey, why is it that every year that four or five stars um, wide receivers want to go to Alabama? Well, it's because they see Jerry Judy, right. and Devonta Smith, and all of those guys ahead of them go through the exact same process. process. Like, it is the same Same thing. thing. Nebraska has to get to that because what you do, if you don't have that, and that chain is kind of broken like it is right now, you've got, say, Wondell Robinson looking and saying, well, I I don't really know how this is going to go in the end. And on top of that, we're losing right now, right? And so it'd be different if you were asking those guys to stick through it and to really trust you while you were also winning games. But that makes it – that just makes it even tougher. Right, and let's be honest, Wondell's – uh, example was JD, right, right. I mean, and they were somewhat close. I they mean, were. you know, they lived together, or whatever, for that summer, and that's the example. And they probably talked, and you know, and and you know, not saying that that was it, it was wait or made the decision for him, but it was yeah. But if you just think it, about what we're talking about, about, like it. those are, and that happens, you can really look at that kind of across the board right. at various positions. And it's why I think I think it's part of the big reason that people are missing about when we talk a lot now because it's been it's going to continue to come up about the difference with the offense and the defense, right? right. And I, I'm going to keep saying it, the part of the reason why the defense seems more stable right now is because I think on the whole they have better leadership and more veteran guys that have yeah. kind of stuck through it. If you think about what we were just talking about, think about what Markel Dismuke has seen during his time at right. Nebraska, right, and all, and he pushed through. He's been a he be a multi year starter. He can pass that down to Miles Farmer, right, who just went through a pretty bad, bad injury, injury right. and now he's gonna have to keep keep his mind right and right. go through. Yeah. You Braxton got guys Clark. at Braxton Clark, yep. another guy. You got guys that have gone through it right. in that room to then come out the other side. You kind of have it at linebacker where you have Will Honus right. and the expectations on him. He can then pass yeah, that down to Reimer and Hemrich and, and, and all those right. guys, Heimer. right? Yeah. And you go the defensive line with Casey Rogers and yeah. how he's come through and now. Now, I know um, Ruquan Buckley, the uh, three-star defensive lineman from Michigan, when I talked to him before he came to campus early, he named Casey Rogers and said, I can't wait to go learn from that guy. Right. Those are the things that right. you want to start to right. see. Yeah. You've got yeah, to have see. that all over the team. Yeah, and one of the things that people don't understand, you talked about signing day, which is going to be hopefully a good one for him because obviously – We'll see. There, there's, we'll a, see. There, there's a big get out there. Yeah, that, we'll see what Devontae he Dickerson, up to, he, yeah. he didn't want to go up there to row the boat land, right? Maybe no. he wants to be down here and shuck some corn and be at the crib. <laughs> or but, he wants to be a duck in Eugene. We'll see. Yeah, we'll, I, see. Yeah, we'll see. I doubt I mean, okay. But we'll anyways, <laughs> at the end of the day, what people don't understand, and this is what I like this. The, tra- the thing I don't like about the transfer portal, it makes it easy for kids to quit. Mm-hmm. And then they end up quitting and with nowhere to go. And yeah, they, and with the, without a plan and without really thinking it through. Because really think about when through. we were that age, the decisions that we would have made um, just in general, transfer portal or not, nah, you get bad been, decisions right, at right. that age. And, 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 and so – and then you go into transfer portal, then you come back, or well, then I got a question whether you want to be here. You right. probably find a better option. So, But I th- the thing I like about the transfer portal, and I think I w- w- what I'm going to double up on what you just said, I think it makes coaches do their jo- – it should make their coach do their job even more. And here's why. I got to have a plan for Greg Smith when I'm coming to recruit you. Yep. And I got I to gotta not only get you to believe in it, I got to get your parents to believe in it. Then when I get here, I got to regurgitate that plan yep. with you, put you in that process of plan, see how you do it, right? Mm-hmm. And then obviously re- recruit other players maybe at your position, obviously. Mm-hmm. But then that plan might change, right? right? Because maybe you exceeded that plan. Or maybe you're not getting that plan. Maybe you aren't fitting into the defensive scheme. So now we got to have another plan for you. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, I made a commitment to you for four right. Five I, years. You recruited me for a reason, <laughs> right. right? I spent money in yeah. on flights, recruiting, yep. text, time, the time, the time, right? Yeah. So, so we're going to make this work here, mm-hmm. you know. And, and everything that you know, here's what also the the fan or these these people that are on 
the chat lines or whatever they don't understand. Every kid that gets recruited, it can't be how does he going to be all Big Ten to the NFL, and that's the only thing that matters of him being good right. or having a good experience, right? There's still 1% of the guys that go, right. less than 1% that make it. Those numbers ain't changing unless they start getting 45 teams and, and, and all that <laughs> right. stuff, right? I know they boost up the roster, so it might be. But at the end of the day, that's the way it goes. And it, it, and I think the more emphasis that we have to understand is you have to re-recruit these guys. It, well, I know two times a year now, the first early signing period and the yep. second one. And then you got to also, then after you re-recruit the guys on your roster twice, then you got to might adjust those plans or add to the plan. Maybe and, you could, I know you can handle more. Maybe yeah. I think you're on the cusp of being, now I got to ask more of you. And you have to communicate that to me. Oh, yeah. That, well, I need what, to know. And that's right. what I'm saying. So that right. that's, a, and I think that sometimes that can be a missing piece. That is a huge uh, missing piece. And that piece. is a, it's a, it's a really big deal. You have to, it's not just having the plan for me. As if I, in this scenario that I'm the recruit right. that I came in, I was the five star quarterback. Right. Um, <laughs> and so you, you recruited me and I need to have that plan. But then as I'm going through my career, we need to have those check ins. We need to go oh. sit down in the office and we could talk about that. And it doesn't, and listen, it's not always going to be sunshine. And lollipops, oh, no. right? Like we can have those tough conversations, but I think people are more likely, or players are more likely to receive that tough feedback yeah. if they know that it's coming from a good place right. and they know that everybody across the board is, is getting, getting that. that right. right? It, it's a lot easier to accept that. In it's situation. just like your wife having a plan in her head and don't tell you about it to the very end and already planned it for a month. You ain't going to be happy about it, right? No. You, right? I can't have a plan for a recruit or a player on my team. And not him not knowing because I you can't be walking around like out there on campus thinking I'm doing everything I need to do or I'm on the cusp of being able to get, earn right. some playing time. And I'm like, you know what, I'm contemplating moving you from running back because we're just bringing in, you know, Amon Green. Now we're going to try you at Will Linebacker because right. I think you can do it. Well, then that plan changed. Right. right? right? But or, if I or, didn't or, know that, I had right. to like Or say like if right. I was a defensive coordinator, I might be like, you know what, I like Rhymers. On the inside, you know what I mean? We got a little bit more nickel. But, you know, I like JoJo Doman as my nickel inside linebacker. But I got to tell JoJo, yeah, you're starting on me in the outside. Third and third down, third and long, this is what I'm going to do with you. Okay, this is the mix we're going to do. Explain to him why. That, right, or just and, how. And, and it's a way to, and this is sometimes, it, and this happens, and we know this happens across life, across all industries, is sometimes people have a tendency not that are in authority to not want to have to explain those things to those mm -hmm. people, right? Or in this case, technically, they're employees, for lack of a better um, kind of analogy, even though that would get us down a slippery slope. Yeah. But I'm not going there for right now for the sake of this discussion. But you still need to explain those things so that everybody can be on the same page. It's not just... You snap your fingers. That guy, JoJo, just understands right. that he has to do that. And then you also probably need to, and this is part of that re-recruiting and part of that communication, you need to explain to guys why this new plan or the plan that they're on is best for them. Mm -hmm. and best for the team, right? right? Like, it can't just be assumed that they'll understand that it's the best thing for them and for the team. You actually have to do that. And I think that the overall thing to me on this is that and it's across college football that coaches anymore are basically – they always had to communicate, but you almost have to over communicate at oh, this point with because these you kids? can't. Yeah, you can't oh. leave anything to no. chance. No, like no one, no wide receiver on Nebraska's team right now should be walking around wondering where they stand mm -hmm. on the team and if how they could find a path to playing time. Right. Like, nobody should feel especially like that. at that position. And the second one is running back. And these kids these days. Here's the funny. Here's the difference. Like me and you, right? When we say we were, we played at Nebraska, like we would be coming into the off season right now. Just say at receivers, mm -hmm. right? And working our tail off and being in there and learning and watching tape and saying, like, how, you know, taking it. Like, okay, we didn't play good that next year. Yeah. I know they're bringing in some recruits, but I want to start. Right. I'm going to go earn it. These kids, these days, you have to over-communicate with them and tell them all the good things for them to work hard. It's the funniest thing ever. Yeah, it's you almost know, like it, in reverse. It's, it, you got to reverse. Yeah. It's like reverse psychology or, yeah. you know, you got to, you know, it's like, you know, you got to train the end of the race before you do all the, right. the hard stuff before. And that's really, that's the way kids are these days. Yeah, you now, just have to accept part of that and adjust as well. And now I will say this, not, and I'm, I'm going to back back on that statement. The kids that we have here or, or, or the kids that aren't at Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State, those type of schools are like that. Because when you step on campus, in, and I'll even throw Wisconsin in there because I remembered 
uh, it was it, they had a safety number fourteen. It was Dakota somebody where he said like, look, when I got recruited, they told me how it was. You're gonna come, yeah, here and bust was, your tail. yeah, because I did a, a right, story yeah, on that. that. I was yeah. telling you about that because right. I was kind of blown away right. by he what said, he to, how he, he described. They said, look, yeah. you're gonna work hard. You're gonna keep your mouth shut. You're gonna earn your spot. You're gonna do your work in the weight yeah. room. You're gonna be physical and you're gonna be held accountable. And this is the way we do things. Yeah, and they told me that on the recruiting trip. On the recruiting trip, <laughs> yeah, right. So that's just the difference. So so we have a lot of kids or some kids, um, and I think Scott's. The, when you listen to the statement, when he said, I am focusing on the guys, and he said he really enjoys being around this team, I think they've got a lot of those guys out of the program that you have to fluff it up for them to go out and work hard. Right. Um, because those are the guys, same guys that were probably, you know, not attending meetings and stuff like that when Riley was here. You know, freshmen in the, you know, right. the Keyshawn Johnson Jr. and stuff like that. So, you know, it's a look, you know, you have to over communicate with these kids. Because they need constant reminders. They need constant, um, I think, it, correct me if I'm wrong, Sasha, is it affirmation? Is that it? <laughs> Positive affirmation. Positive, right? So they need co- constant affirmation um, of what they're doing right. And then you have to kind of like massage what they're not doing right or what they're doing wrong. But you, then you got to, you, you know, you got to fluff it up at the beginning of the conversation. A little bit of, of, of negativity in a minute. But then when they leave, you got to say, oh, man, you're, you're going to be, you yeah. know, the next Lawrence Taylor as a linebacker when you leave it. So it, it's a hard thing to do. Um, but, you know, people are getting paid handsomely to do it. They got to do it. Um, they got to find a way to do it better. Um, but then also sometimes you got to be willing um, to make hard choices and be willing to let kids leave. Look, Scott wanted Luke here. You know what I'm right. saying? Um, everybody is hanging on like Luke's the, Luke was the future. Well, ultimately, as a coach, you're, you know, you, you got to see what Greg can do, right. right? I've seen flashes of you doing things, right? Mm-hmm. So say like if I just saw, I, I saw you throw, you know, 10, you know, seven routes or, you know, bang eights, you know what I mean? And, yes, I, maybe I saw two or three of them that were good. I saw four that need a lot of work and two or so-so, right? I don't even know if that adds up to 10. But – if I've seen you two or three times and I can get you to six or seven times, right. that's when I know you can get better. And then the running ability and all that stuff is going to accentuate your passing ability. That's what he meant by that. So, you you know, Scott hated to lose him. But ultimately, if he didn't want to put the work in and he wanted it too soon before he was ready, then he was never going to be ready. And then I'm going to say this. If you're going to pull the plug and transfer or, or all that stuff, that means you was thinking about that during the season. Yeah, that would, that means yeah. you was thinking about that during the season. Yep. Then I'm gonna go back and watch tape, and I'm gonna watch how you were practicing. Mm-hmm. Okay, and maybe learn from that. So if I see any of those things during right, and during, that's another future, learning experience for the coaching staff. For the coaching oh, yeah. staff, then I got to do that as well. So it's it's constant learning, and you're gonna have to go through this type of stuff until you start winning. And, yeah, and because, yes, you can't yep. win with your best players, but ultimately there's a bunch of backups that that uh, transferred. But you just, I mean. He had – I mean, I know his dad – I played against his dad. Uh. Dad was a great player. My son, I was saying, look, dude, you – this is your first offseason really going to compete because they didn't get to compete last year. Adrian was going to start because yeah, of COVID. Yeah, because it's just shortened time. Yeah. You're playing with a guy that ain't never finished a season since high school. Right. So you're going to play. You're going to play. And he already been on the hot seat. Now let's be honest about your game. All right, right. son, this is my job to tell you. You ain't hit a broadside of the barn in Illinois. You turned the ball over the first play of the game. And you didn't even, you weren't even supposed to do it. Yeah. Okay, so where's your accountability at? Yeah, go ahead. You want to go talk to your mom, be mad at your mom. But you're going to come back in here, I'm going to tell you the same thing, right? <laughs> right. They say she's tougher than he right. is, Lisa. Yeah. yeah. But see, I, but I think then that those are the – will be back here competing. Right, and I think that those are the – and it's so, and that's part of the thing that – it's interesting to me because I do wonder about those conversations, and I think that sometimes the, every situation is different and they're unique. Um, but I do, I do just wonder how you arrive to that spot, unless something just went totally wrong that we just don't know. Um, but but it's just a, a really interesting situation, and obviously we'll see. There's still more time to see if anybody else transfers out. I don't think that there's anything really left out there that, yeah. that people are worried about. I think that the roster as is um, is the roster as sad, is. Yeah, yeah it, until unless something crazy happens, I don't have to leave myself that out because it is 2020. Yeah, you never know spring ball. And you never know. Yeah, well, spring, like, I, yeah. I, I should say that until we get to spring ball because yeah. you got some positions. Yeah. We that talk about depth, wide receiver, running, running back, back there's a defensive lot of, line, offensive line, where you've got a lot of young players. And just, only so, and only so many spots. Yeah. So you're gonna have a lot of scholarships. A couple in of guys, yeah. uh, going through. So good problem to have if they actually play good. 
Right, a great problem to have to play good. So I want to switch gears a little bit. So we got the Super Bowl coming up. That's right. This coming week. Um, I, I feel like the Chiefs are about to march towards this repeat yeah. and run it back. Um, but it'll be a good game. Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady, the the current GOAT and maybe future GOAT, or the only guy that really right. has a shot to take down Tom Brady. i got to look away from Sasha when she don't throw something at me. I say somebody can catch Tom Brady. Um, but we'll see. But – that's not what I actually want to talk about, really, the game. Um, we'll talk about that next week. I want to get into the, these parties. Let's break that down. So normally, normally, <laughs> we would be getting ready You're for big parties. You're asking me to incriminate myself? Yep. Uh, uh, <laughs> I am. We're going we gonna to put it down on wax. It's okay, going to be out there you. forever. So normally you have these you have big parties. I don't know if you're a big Super Bowl party guy. I kind of am within reason I would in a normal situation. We'll be doing that this year. A lot of people won't be doing it yeah. um, and for good reason. Um but I, I do kind of like it if it's people that I know. But since this year they're basically eliminated um, or very, very small, you're going to have more control over what goes on that menu. So what I want us to do is to go through, we're going to do a snake-style draft of our top Super Bowl food and drink situations. Oh, okay. And then at the end, we're going to have Sasha judge and say which one, which party she want to go to based on what we picked. Then we're going to have Sasha give a couple of things that she got to have at her parties. I'm going to let you go first. Since uh, food and drink, food or drink. First thing you're gonna go, you gotta have some wings. Okay, you gotta have wings, pounds and pounds of wings. That's number one. (laughs) Pounds and pounds of wings. Okay, so I guess my my then first pick. This is very specific. It's ribs, Mm. but those of you that live here in Lincoln, maybe in Nebraska, know Dell. Right, Dell the dude on Twitter. Right, you know this man gets down on his barbecue. Oh, so you're really stepping up? Oh yeah, yeah. I actually one year it was the year actually Cam Newton that that Super Bowl where he didn't dive on the ball. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) yeah. Half ass. That one I took. I bought some ribs from Dell and took those to the party. It was a big hit. Probably the best thing I ever bought to somebody's party. Right. Uh, They were very happy with me. They invite me back all the time. So Dell's ribs. Okay, uh, my okay. you really there. stepping it up because and it's this is a drink too, right? Yeah, yeah, you can we can we had a drink in there. Oh, so then so with the Super Bowl drink, we're gonna definitely we're gonna have ribs or not ribs. We're gonna have my we're gonna have wings. I'm gonna save my last the, the what I was just thinking about to the last the drinks that I, the drink that I'm gonna have. If I'm having multiple people over. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna have. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna have two. So we're gonna definitely we're gonna do light and, and dark. We're definitely okay. gonna have the vodka. Okay. With we're gonna have multiple mixers with cranberry, orange juice, lemonade, but we're also gonna set it off. We're gonna have the fine, thinly crushed ice in there. So it's almost gonna be. Like oh, a see now, okay, hold on. You turned up the party. Oh, yeah. Okay, oh, hold on now. Oh, I gotta man, get myself to together. Oh, yeah, you better hold get, on you, now. You oh, out here with no the, okay. All right. So then I'm really gonna step it over with the wings. Okay. 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 All right. You got yeah. so you got the vodka, the mixers with the finely crushed ice, that right. sonic ice. Yes. Um <laughs> okay, all right. I actually was going to go vodka next, but since you took it, it's off the board, it is, it is on team foreman. I'm actually gonna go with another versatile liquor. I'm gonna go rum. Okay. And since I got rum, I can go light and dark rum, right. depending on how yeah, you okay. feel and we go on Yeho. We could we could do what what you coconut rum, whatever you want to do. Mm-hmm. I'm a big rum drinker. Yeah. So <laughs> we can we can do that. Rum, very versatile. You can put it in a little punch, you can mm-hmm. do what it is. Uh enjoy it responsibly at my house. Okay. And then uh so rum is my second. All right, drink. I like that. I I could deal with that. So but to see the, also for the people that are a little bit healthy. Okay. okay. We're gonna have uh, a big vegetable platter with all that stuff. Okay. That we're gonna definitely have that because we want the we want the in game type of snacks. You know what I'm saying? Okay, some of you, you just look at and all that during. stuff, okay. right? Okay. So we're gonna have that that because I'm softening you up with that one right there. Okay. So I'm just giving you the little layup because I'm leading right now to nothing. <laughs> I don't, I don't I'm gonna know. let you be two one. This, we, this is like an MMA fight, okay? I, I don't know. I'm the man. dude that just beat up McGregor. You, you, I'll give you this right mid round. Okay, so I'm okay, gonna finish so you okay. off though, like Khabib. All right, I see. <laughs> I need, I need to come back strong here because you got the veggie platter. You went healthy. I'm gonna go mm-hmm. the other way because I always at my parties mm-hmm. we always gotta have some dessert. Okay, I'm gonna go with a classic. I'm going with brownies. Ooh. We're going we to throw some brownies on there. You can, you can do all kind of variations yeah. on the brownie. Right. But, but the brownie, maybe, maybe with a little pecans in there, mm-hmm. do them up. We, we go with brownies. Okay. Gotta I, have I, a I'll take that. I'll take that. And then I'm going I'm to get go ahead and get my cookies with multiple flavor ice cream. Chocolate chip, M&M, peanut butter, oatmeal. Probably the best big cookie platter I've had, <clears throat> excuse me, is one I bought at Sam's Club. The other one is Costco. 
Then I'm gonna have <laughs> you the biggest this table, yeah, right? So okay. exactly, we having a we having a party. Okay, this ain't okay. just a get together. All right, just social right. distance, everybody. Right? We're gonna have we're gonna have everybody social throughout the garage, yep. and hopefully in the back, and then with the multiple ice creams, right? Because I'm gonna want you to bring your kids over there too. We got keep we got sugar them up so when I send them send them home <laughs> they terrorize right, in the terrorize. house when they go yeah. home. Okay, all right, that was that was a solid pick. Okay, I'm gonna go, boy. I said I got my my list that I'm working on here, but you got to make sure that you're not gonna take it. I'm gonna go with something that's actually out of all the things that we're probably gonna talk about outside of the liquor, my favorite thing that I have to have. This is something I have to have every Super Bowl party: pigs in a blanket. Always on my menu every time, 100. Yeah. percent but it's got to be the little cheddar smokies. Like okay. We gotta, we gotta have oh, the so chatter in there. Yeah, yeah. I'm serious about my pigs in a blanket. I'm serious about my wing. Okay, yeah. See, right. the, okay. And so, with pigs in a blanket, that's my fourth pick. So, you got one pick left. One pick left. This is your final pick. Right. It can't be just a combination. No, you can get okay. too many. I gave you one with the cookies with right. ice cream. Okay. That's cheap. All right, all right. <laughs> well, see, since we're just gonna have the wings, but I'm gonna since we having a party. Yep. I'm going to do something special for you. And if Sasha was coming, I'd do something special for you. Okay. I know Dell throws down his ribs. I yeah. know he does. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? I had his ribs before. Delicious. But since you coming to my party, mm. to my house, mm. I'm cooking you my ribs, though. <laughs> <Okay>. Wait, <laughs> hold okay. on now. Hold on now. Hold on. This is no knock on Dell, but I'm coming with the foreman recipe with the foreman sauce. Okay. okay? <laughs> the one that the my grandfather, oh, okay, see, going rest old his school. soul, then passed down in his little book right here with his little scri- <laughs> scribbles on there, and I got it. So we're going with it. It's right okay. there. Yeah. So we're going to have a rib off at the two different parties. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I, with, I will with, allow with the, that. Because with, with, with of the sauce. With the, would you put the blindfold on somebody? How they <laughs> to do a blind taste, taste test. <laughs> okay. So then for my final pick, I'm going to go. I, let's see. So we got a, we got the drink. We got a little dessert. We got little finger foods. I see you. I think you could you could kind of eat on these pigs in a blanket. And my last mm-hmm. pick throughout the game too. I'm gonna go with crock pot meatballs. But sticking with what you'll pick up on very quick that I like my liquor. It's gonna be a whiskey barbecue combo mm-hmm. in that crock pot. Very delicious. I've only had it once. I should have asked whoever's house I was at like how they made this. Uh, so I've always been kind of chasing that recipe. I need to find that out. But crock pot meatballs, whiskey barbecue sauce combo on those bad boys. And now we're set. Now so we're set. now we have to figure out because we got, I mean, this is a solid lineup. You can't go wrong either way. First of all, before you judge, Sasha, I want you to give me give me a few things that you have to have at your party. Well, I made a list while you guys were talking and everything <laughs> I picked isn't a part of your guys' list. Okay. So then the listeners need to tell us whose party they're going to out of the three of us. I okay. Guess. I need the seasoned shrimp from Absolutely Fresh. Okay. It's, oh, I forgot shrimp. Okay, it's so dang. good. It's okay, so I love. I don't know what that seasoning is, but it's delicious. I want deviled eggs. Okay, yeah, with a green oh, olive. Oh, I love deviled eggs. I might. Like, we might just yeah. go to sausage. <laughs> <party. laughs> okay, you gotta healthy, have healthy over there. <laughs> <laughs> Cheese crackers and a meat tray. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Solid classic. That. Classic. Velveeta and rotel the hot rotella. Yep. Mm-hmm. Tomatoes and tortilla chips and buffalo trace for old fashions. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah. Buffalo Trace is always in the rotation at the house. I got some yeah. of that, too. Um, that's that's solid. That's yeah. solid. Man, I don't know. All the parties sound that. I'm just right. hungry now. Right. I know, I'm just right? hungry. All right, Sasha, which, which party are you coming to? Okay, honestly, Jay was winning with the wings and the vodka and the veggie platter. And then you said pigs in a blanket and meatballs. So I might have to pick I knew Greg. it, too. Yeah, <laughs> I, I knew it, too. Because I love Greg. it. I'm going to tell you, I went to a Super Bowl party. <laughs> Last year, yeah. and he had some meatballs in the crock. Yeah. I, I destroyed him. It's so I, good. It's like, so it was like, and you eat so many and don't even realize. Third like, quarter, he, like, yeah, I, was third, I destroyed him. He's he, he third quarter. He's like, man, what happened to all the meatballs? I was just sitting over there. I was like, dang, I don't know, man. They, they was <laughs> good. Funny. Destroyed his meatballs. You got to have a backup crock pot of extra yeah. meatballs. Yeah, see, that's how you yeah. got to do it. It's funny, too, because, it, like, I can picture, like, various Super Bowls. Like, I can, I remember them for the party. And, like, you remember, and it's been now been cause the years just fly by, the, the Kaepernick Super Bowl where Beyonce performed mm-hmm. and the power went out mm-hmm. at halftime. Yep. And so that was the last, like, big one that we threw. <laughs> we had a keg. Was that when the Harbaugh brothers played yeah. each other? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a keg, and then when the power went out, we were doing Ciroc shots. Just how many years ago was that? Because I feel like yeah. I couldn't do this now. I feel like oh, I could yeah. not handle yeah, you, this you, now. You, 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 the thing is on that one. now we're working out. Yeah, I couldn't <laughs> do it now. Um, I'd be a lightweight too. Is that I'll never forget 
then we had like basically everybody at the party stayed. Mm. People just slept on the floor because everybody's messed yeah, up messed after because right. we because we didn't know when the power was coming back on. We yeah, because it didn't tra- come on for like a while. it was a while. I don't yeah. know. It feels like it was longer than it actually was. I don't know if it was actually that long because that Sarah kind of sneak up on you, but. Yeah. See, that's how we get down. Yeah. got to do it. I told you, Jay, as listeners out there, if you've ever done this, well, when, when all of COVID is over, and we wanted to do this so bad, it's not a Super Bowl party, but we're going to do a Kentucky Derby party. And I told you about this yeah, before. We're going to do it. And we've had this plan for years now, but we have never been able to do it because for some reason we're never here. And so we're going to do it where, like, you got to come dressed up. The ladies got to come with the hats. Um, we're going to have some special drinks because we went down there for it before. My dad has been down there a couple of yeah. times. Like, we really get into it. And so that's going to be the next big party. We kind of off Super Bowl party right. now. We're going yeah, we to push it to the yeah, next yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so we'll see how that goes. But every week, and thank you, Sasha, for, for helping us out yes. there. Uh, Thanks, Sasha. Every week we, end, we end the show, as we always do, with our segment called Put Them on Blast. Uh, we basically put somebody on blast for something they did or said. Put them on blast. Today... I'm going with the new Tennessee athletic director, Danny White. Did you did you see this? Yeah, well, yeah, it might have been. There's a yeah. couple of things he said, actually, but I'm going to go with this one. After taking the job in Knoxville, he had to hire a football coach. They got all sorts of issues down there in Tennessee, yeah. the NCAA, knocking on the door. Um, he went the familiar route and picked Josh Heupel, who was his coach at UCF that he hired after, Scott, now, Frost. after Scott Frost left, right? And so he had this lie, I mean, statement. Right after he hired him, he said about Josh Heupel, he was our number one option. The job was offered to just one person. I know that there's a lot of rhetoric out there to the contrary, but that's just not true. I'm putting him on blast because how long are we going to do this? Why do we do this for every coaching hire? And sometimes AD hires too. Where these guys get up there and say, oh, no, we never wanted to. It can be the sixth choice. Right. <laughs> it doesn't matter. No one is the sixth no one, choice. Yeah, no one is ever the sixth choice. And we only ever offer these jobs to one guy. I feel like, now it actually might have been true in this case. I feel like Bill Moose said this when they hired Scott Frost. But yeah. that actually might have that might be one of the and very rare it, cases where it actually it, was yeah. true. Because everybody in the world wanted Scott Frost to come here when he came back, right? right? And so I just want to know why we have to continue doing this. I don't think that you have to necessarily say, get up there in these press conferences and be like, well, you know, Nick Saban turned us down. And then, right. you know, we tried to You're hire right. Mario Cristobal. And then we tried to get Pat Fitzgerald. They all said no. And we somehow ended up with Josh Hype. Well, you don't have to say that. But I just don't understand why they had to continue to go with that particular lie that we only offered it to one person. Right. So what did you interview the other guys for that were actually more established coaches? Right. Like, Which is you also don't a lie to the fans because at this point in time he's the head coach. Say, look, yeah, what man, they go. Is, well, I was, well, I was going to say what they going to do, but we saw when the reports with Greg Schiano in the last oh, yeah, time, yeah. the fans, ooh, they yeah, got they after got it. After, yeah, so, <laughs> I mean, last one, which it, would have actually turned out better, better for them in the long them. run, but hey. And it was the way they did Greg Schiano down there that was wrong. Yeah, it, but then it, it's crazy because if you think about it, and, and now, though, they're in even a worse spot. Like I mentioned, the NCAA looking into them for the recruiting violations, paying players yeah. that report about the McDonald's bags on recruiting visits. But it's just crazy to think about, like, how sophisticated you could do that. And, and how then to do it, Yeah, they, and how unsophisticated they allegedly, I guess, um, did it. But it was funny, though, because I follow enough of these recruits on Twitter to know that I think that there was some truth to that yeah. because – there were Tennessee commits and then guys that kind of liked Tennessee that were like, hey, man, why y'all snitching? Like, yeah. <laughs> it was kind of which is, it was kind of funny to me. I really don't get all that out of shape, been out of shape about that because to my, my thing, especially in the SEC, it it's all over Everywhere. the place. If you think it's not, like, you're living under a rock. Um, so, yeah, we got to put Danny White on blast for that. Yeah, for well, that you also got to put him on blast because he spent $120,000 to pick a coach that you already knew. I forgot about the search firm. They did, but right. they they hired. Which also, I feel like whoever like it is, it feels like it's only a a, a handful of those search firms out there. Um, they got the best racket in the world going right. on. Like, I mean, they getting paid to uh, pick the coach. You got paid over a hundred thousand dollars just to steer him towards the coach that he already had, and then he comes out and say he was the number one choice anyway. Why'd you hire or search a search firm? firm? Unless, like, you're, just the, unless you're the Houston Texans. Yeah, then you got your own problem. You're not well, about well, to put, they, they hired, to put they them on the blast. Search firm. Yeah. The search firm gave them the guys that they should uh, interview and, and hire. They hired somebody else. Not once, but twice. And they're about to lose a Hall of Fame, Fame, Hall of Fame player within the next – in 18 months, they're going to be losing two Hall of Fame players. Maybe three because they're going to have to trade J.J. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, well, three. <laughs> so. yeah. There you go. You went from – so, 
That, that's how you ruin a, a university or and a, a professional organization. Now watch after all of that, Josh Heifel ends up being good. Right. Well, I, I, <laughs> think, that's he, how I it think goes. I think he'll end up doing well. I it, I think the thing he that coach I'll, offense. I think, I think that's good. good. That's going to be what's his idea of defense? Because in order to be successful yeah. in that league and be successful at Tennessee with their schedule, you have to be able to play D. Yeah. So that's a big change for him. We've seen it here, right? Yeah, and, we saw and the so, same but, thing. And so, but we're playing a little bit of defense now. So uh, the person that I'm going to put on blast because I had the uh, finally, a little bit of re- relaxation when you aren't forced via COVID to sit there and look at the TV. But I got to watch a little golf. Okay. Um, so I'm a avid golf watcher. Um, I'm putting Patrick Reed on ba- on blast. Okay. So if anybody doesn't know anything about Patrick Reed, you Google him. He has a pretty checkered past. I'm not going to get into his family stuff, but pretty checkered fat pa- past that he started out at Georgia. Supposedly was stealing stuff from teammates. Got kicked <laughs> off of there. Went to Georgia State. Actually ended up taking them to the national championships. But everywhere he's been, he's uh, alienating himself from teammates, and he's truly hated by majority of the guys on the on the PJ Tour. Okay. Um, there's one of his former teammates that said if his, if, he was, if his car was burning on the side of the road, I would not even stop and give him Damn. a glass of water. Hey, that's, you that, got right. some stuff to somebody. But that, uh. also, he's been taking the task, even as recent in 2009, with these – rules violations of grounding your club, uh, breaking moral rules and rules that are in the rules in the game of golf and since college. But the most recent one was at the Tiger Woods charity tournament where there's only like 12 guys. (laughs) And so every camera is going to be on each guy, right? Right. Or say if there's 18, the field, it's a limited field invitation only. And you ground your club in the, in the sand trap. Like that's stuff that my daughters would do that don't play golf. To to get advantage, and so if when you're a professional golfer, if you're ever doing that, you're able to probably hit it to, you know, so you know, cl- really, really close. Well, he was playing out at, at Torrey Pines. It was wet. Um, he hit a ball that bounced. So, and he said that he he said that his ball got embedded. So embedded would be, you know, say like when all the snow melts and we're out playing, and you hit a high shot and it sticks into the ground, you get a free drop. Well, his ball bounced. <laughs> and then he went into the, and then so he ran up there, you know, put a tee down, marked his ball, which you should have called over a rules official, which uh-huh. his ball bounced, it couldn't be embedded, you know. And there you, you got Patrick Reed, ultimately ends up winning the tournament without the <laughs> without the penalty. But I'm gonna tell you, if if I'm robbing the bank with somebody, I'm robbing it with him. He looked dead in that TV. <laughs> And said, I no follow, he, he followed all the protocols, which you did, but it's like the protocols could only be followed because you already manipulated the outcome by picking up your ball, right? right? So it's like we go in and rob a bank, right? Mm. And we clean up all the evidence, and then they come in, and, and we got the money in the back, and they say, did you all see the money? No, nah, man, we just walked in here, right? right. But we – we erased the the, the, the closed circuit TV up there in, in the cameras and say, you know what, wipe that ain't the a, wipe, wipe the fingerprints off. So I'm putting him on blast because every golfer, even Roy McIlroy, and there's some other guys, was saying, you, generally in that situation, 99% of the golfers would take the penalty. So just so they aren't in this situation that you're talking about that you want unfairly. Patrick Reed, on the other hand, so I'm I here. got that dub. I can bend the rules. Oh yeah, he's a new e- oh, oh, Sasha. He's the New England Patriots of the <laughs> oh, golf. Oh, okay, golf. that's fine. But I I don't hate on New England. If you're dumb enough to go out there and practice right there, and they got the scouts there, you deserve to be filmed. Patrick Reed, in a sense, no, he's a foot wedger. You know what I'm saying? You, you, <laughs> I played with a guy. I'm gonna tell you the story. I played with Jabbar Gaffney in a like charity tournament down yeah. there, in Florida wide receiver. Florida wide receiver. Yeah. <laughs> And had a great career. Like, yeah. and he played with New England, won a couple Super Bowls. But you see him, he's got dreads now and everything. Yeah. Well, anyways, we were playing in this, like, offense-defense charity event, you know, for charity down there for Houston Texans. And I remember, I remember he was out there in these basketball shorts. It was him and Andre Johnson. Yeah. And Andre was – never played golf. His ball was on four holes over. I see Jabbar. I was like, Jabbar – and Jabbar played all the time. I said, man, where's your ball? He's like, I'm looking for it, right? So he had another one. And dropped it out of his pocket, came around down his leg. I let him go with it, <laughs> but when we were having drinks afterwards, man, I seen it. As I told him, I seen it. That's 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 Patrick that's Green. Okay. He's foot wedge. Everybody knows though that guy. 
that they, yes. they play golf with that person that does that all the time. Uh, my dad does that, man. I hope he listens to this. He's right. going to call me. Um, he does it all the time, trying to cheat. You used to drop – I used to um, be putting, and he would accidentally drop his clubs yeah. as I was putting. My <laughs> dad used to, to do that to me too, time. man. He used to drive me nuts. Um, but I actually also think that's a part of having to grow up and play sports with your dad. Yeah. Like, he's always going to find ways once you oh. start beating him. Yep. It's, <laughs> it's going down here for you. they got to pull the old man tricks out. Um, but that's a great place to leave it for today. Uh, subscribe to the podcast everywhere you can listen to them. Uh, rate us and leave us a five-star review. If you only leave four, I am inclined to think you're a hater like Jay or Shaq. Uh, make sure that you are <laughs> checking out the other podcasts on the Hill Varsity Network, uh, the Mind Your Own Park Podcast, Varsity Club, more to it, and the Hill Varsity Radio Show. You can also check out the Hill Varsity YouTube page now, too. I will be on there this week kind of breaking down National Signing Day and actually doing a recap of it uh, on Wednesday. And you can email the show at straightupbreakdown at hailvarsity.com. And you can find us on Twitter at Greg Smith HV and at Foreman 5644. We will catch you next time. A Media Production.